Lumbar spinal stenosis is a degenerative condition characterized by narrowing of the lumbar spinal canal. The lumbar spine is composed of five vertebral bodies. Each of these bones are separated by a disc, and at each disc level a nerve exits, all of which join together in the buttock to form a larger nerve known as the sciatic nerve. Therefore, if a nerve is pinched in the lower back, it produces pain in the back, buttock, and down the leg, and this is known as sciatica. As we age, there's a natural loss of fluid from the discs and the articular cartilage in the lower back. The space between the bones begins to narrow. Bone comes in contact with other bones. The joints are under more pressure and it begins to degenerate. This degeneration leads to a closing off of the spinal canal. You develop bone spurs. You can have soft tissue such as the ligaments folding into the spinal canal as they shorten. You can break off pieces of disc, and these herniated discs can fill up the spinal canal. The articular surfaces themselves sometimes develop cysts known as synovial cysts that can close off the spinal canal. Spinal stenosis is the most common reason for lumbar spine surgery in patients 65 years and older. It occurs slightly more frequently in males than females, and 91% of the time it occurs between the L4 and the L5 vertebral bodies. When we speak of spinal stenosis, we usually mean central canal stenosis. That's where the entire spinal canal gets pinched off. If you have had an MRI, however, you may see on your report that they mention other types of stenosis. Lateral recess stenosis occurs underneath the articular surfaces in the lumbar spine. This typically impinges upon a single nerve and it develops symptoms consistent with radiculopathy, which is also known as sciatica. Foraminal stenosis is where the opening coming out of the spinal canal gets closed off, and that also produces what is known as radiculopathy, or the impingement of a single nerve. Extra foraminal stenosis. Something is pinching the nerve, but it is on the outside of the foramen, outside the spinal canal. What are the symptoms of spinal stenosis? Well, of course, it is a degenerative condition. It is produced by degeneration of a disc or a level in the lower back, and therefore that can produce pain in the back itself. As nerves get impinged, it can cause pain in the lower back, buttock, down the legs, can be one or both legs, though typically one leg is gonna be more symptomatic than the other leg. When patients walk, they may develop cramping in their legs. And this is known as neurogenic claudication because it is from a nerve problem. The nerves are pinched in the lower back. In this same age group, you will frequently have cardiovascular disease and vascular problems, so it needs to be differentiated from cramping in the legs due to poor blood supply or peripheral vascular disease. In the case of lumbar spinal stenosis, these patients will typically bend their spine, they will bend over, and that opens up the spinal canal and can relieve their symptoms. So you may see patients walking in kind of a bent position or flexed, or frequently these patients are seen at the store pushing a shopping cart, yet leaning over the shopping cart because they find that allows them to walk longer distances. To evaluate peripheral vascular disease, an ultrasound is done of the lower extremities measuring the blood supply known as an arterial Doppler study. Cramping can lead to progressive weakness in the lower extremity, and weakness can lead to drop foot or a slapping gait. The most common level is L4-5. At the L4-5 level is the L5 nerve, and it is the L5 nerve that allows you to pull your foot up. That nerve can be damaged and it can lead to drop foot either on one side or both sides. Once it develops, many times is a permanent condition and these patients may need 
the use of a brace, and the brace is called an AFO, ankle foot orthosis. The first diagnostic tool used is typically an x-ray. If the patient has spinal stenosis, you would expect to see a significant amount of degenerative changes on the plain x-ray. And normally we're going to obtain what's known as flexion extension films. That's the patient bending forward and back to measure for any type of instability in the lower back. Instability in the lower back is known as a spondylolisthesis. The imaging modality of choice for the diagnosis of spinal stenosis is the MRI study. The MRI is a magnetic picture that gives us the internal anatomy of the lumbar spine and it allows us to see the soft tissue such as the discs and the nerves themselves. Lumbar spinal stenosis is a degenerative condition. That means it is a condition that develops over time with aging and most degenerative conditions are treated based upon the level of symptoms. If a patient is asymptomatic, they don't necessarily need treatment. Many patients who have MRI scans that show spinal stenosis remain asymptomatic for prolonged periods of time. If a patient has a cardiac pacemaker or similar device, they may not be able to have an MRI. In that case, we do what's known as a myelogram and CT scan. This involves injecting some dye into the lower back and then a special x-ray known as a CT is carried out. Some of the newer CT scans can develop 3D pictures and models of the lumbar spine. A myelogram CT is an invasive study, and because it is an invasive study, it is usually only carried out when the surgeon believes there is a reasonable probability that the patient is going to need surgery. Patients with numbness, tingling, and weakness in the lower extremities will frequently undergo a study known as an EMG slash NCV. These are studies that measure the electrical activity in the muscles and nerves and also have the capacity to evaluate the velocity at which the impulses travel within the nerves. It is typically used to evaluate whether or not the numbness, tingling, and weakness is due to something within the spinal cord or outside the spinal cord. For example, a patient who has Diabetes may have no lumbar spinal stenosis, but may have numbness tingling in their feet and may even have a drop foot. The numbness tingling and weakness is due to diabetic neuropathy, so surgery on the lower back would not help that individual. Treatment options are typically divided into surgical and non-surgical treatment options. Non-surgical treatment options include medications, and these are typically either non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications such as ibuprofen or medications for neuropathic pain such as Lyrica, Gabapentin. Sometimes we will use narcotic medication if they're having severe pain, but typically it is best to avoid narcotics for the treatment of pain from degenerative disc disease in the lower back or from stenosis. Along with medications, we will use physical therapy, chiropractic treatment, as well as other modalities, and we use epidural injections and transferaminal injections. As a general rule of thumb, if it takes more than three epidural injections in any given year to control the symptoms, the patient should consider surgical intervention. If all conservative treatment options have failed, the patient should consider surgical intervention. The results with surgical treatment for lumbar spinal stenosis is excellent. There are many newer, minimally invasive treatment options available. The surgery involves removing bone and tissue to give the nerves more space. This is called a laminectomy. If there is instability, a spondylolisthesis, the patient may need a fusion. 
Here at the El Paso Spine Center, we specialize in minimally invasive surgery on the lumbar spine, including minimally invasive surgery for the treatment of lumbar spinal stenosis. Frequently, the patient can go home the same day. If you have any questions, write to me at drsmith, elpasospinecenter.com. Share this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and remember to tell your friends and neighbors to watch. Thank you.